I think this is a perfect segment into the mindset of oh. things. And did you always have this mindset going into things of I'm okay with losing and taking a couple failures until I succeed? No, oh, did I? I I mean, gosh, I I don't I don't know. I I know. So my dad is is someone who always loved trying new things. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that uh, that wore off on me. He, he he started like learning how to tap in his 50s, like tap dancing, <laughs> just because he'd never done it. Yeah, and he thinks it's cool. cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. And he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna go do it. And it makes him laugh. <laughs> it's like I've never put on a pair <laughs> of tap shoes or <laughs> never pumped and not seen people laugh or smile. So my dad has absolutely been someone who. Whether I re you know realize it at the time or, or not, but now I can look back and say, yeah, he's someone who had no problem being a goofball, mm -hmm. uh, trying something new, uh, and he and he was a professional musician on stages, like recorded CDs with his brother, and um, so there was always a, a bit of a comfort or normalization, I, I should say, about being seeing seeing someone on a stage. Uh, with a microphone, I, I, I was around that to a degree, mm -hmm. uh, not to what I ended up going into, but, yeah. and I also have played a lot of sports in my life. So sports, I think, really was where I honed in on, on a bit of a tougher mindset of feeling yeah. nervous uh, when it's a big game. And, I, and I've played at s s high, high levels, I guess, um, overcoming nerves and being okay, not being the best. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm five foot six in heels, okay? <laughs> I played varsity volleyball from a university. Yeah. I was a walk on and they just so happened to have room, but I had to try out and bust my ass every single year to just cling to that bench position mm -hmm. that, I, that I rode with pride. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been okay yeah. not knowing I may not be the best, but what I will bring is I'm going to outwork anyone I know. I'm just going to mm. outwork. Mm. And coming back to maybe what I was sharing earlier, you know, in the pandemic where I, I was like, oh, I'm carrying some stuff here and I don't know yeah. if it's serving me anymore. And part of that was the mindset I had to use growing up to realize that the broadcasting dream was just work hard. If you're not the tallest or the most athletic or the best, um, maybe I'm not the best writer or orator. Maybe, maybe hard news doesn't come naturally to me. Mm -hmm. If I'm not the best at it, I'm just going to keep working and not give up. And that served me tremendously over the last 20 plus years, mm -hmm. no question. The thing I had to acknowledge was where in my life was that mindset a disservice? Where could I soften mm -hmm. wow. and where could I surrender right. a hell of a lot more? Cause I was exhausted. Yeah. I was on this um, pace that was not sustainable, especially with not a lot of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the stuff I had to kind of unpack yeah. mm -hmm. um, and get get a, a, a new shift of my mindset into I can achieve things and do things and I don't have to push and struggle and hustle, you know, the whole hustle culture mentality. Right. Yeah. Part of me is like, is this just more of the same industrial perspective just to keep people Locked plugged in. into the yeah. matrix? I don't know, <laughs> right? Like. At some point, y you have to realize where, here's a, here's, a, here's a good way of putting it. Not all seasons are seasons of creation. Mm -hmm. Where are you resting? Yeah. Oh, where are you coming up yeah. with new ideas? Oh, yeah. How, how are you taking, taking rest? Mm -hmm. uh, and I never really realized that when you're always on output mode, things also, if, if you're constantly working hard, you are constantly welcoming hard work. Mm -hmm. But if you're also, if you're working in flow with ease and joy, you are going to attract work that's in flow and ease and joy. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that until two years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I, and I think I have yet to reach that point in the sense where when you work so hard for something and you achieve it, how do you continue working for it? Like my biggest thing is like when I get my Lamborghini, yeah. am I going, yeah. to, like am I, is my life over? 
Like, am I done? <laughs> like, that's my whole j- reason. Is it, like a, is it like a fear? Like, if you're go- you're worried that... I'm just like, 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 what am I chasing now? Like, yeah. what's next? And do you think maybe that was for you as well? Because your dream job was CTV News. Yeah. And no, you my got dream. it. Yeah. And now, because your whole life you worked towards it, now you did it and you enjoyed it. But then what's next? Yeah. So... The what's next moment is what I think a lot of people face as well. And which I'm scared to reach, to be honest. Honestly, never give me my Lamborghini. Like, Just keep it. No, <laughs> go, go for that Lamborghini. But it's... You, you need to... You need to want something beyond a materialistic sure, of reward. Of course, hundred um, percent. But you guys are in your twenties, like yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> your, your babies, <laughs> and you're supposed to dream because that dream is such fuel. Yeah, it is such momentum. Mm-hmm. And I love all of my big, wild, od- audacious dreams because even if you fall halfway there, you're, you're still so ahead happy. of where you are, yeah, right? Exactly. Yep. And I look at my whole twenties and I, I say, thank God I was naive as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Because that naivete serves you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At some point though, you do have to have awareness. Mm. Maybe it's in your 30s. At, at some point you have to take stock of, um, okay, I'm older and wiser. I've, I have skills. I've got X more years under my belt. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's, let's pull back and let's see where, I'm, where you're at. Yeah. Right? Like things, things always change. Mm-hmm. And... I don't even know what the question was anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> the like, what's next moment? Yeah, that what? Next? Yes. Okay. So I, I was rejected early on yeah. um, in my career for an anchor anchoring opportunity that I thought I had. Mm-hmm. I was even told by a manager, "Yeah, you're next in line for this." And when it, when the opportunity came around, and I knew it was mine. And that same manager gave it to a colleague. I was gutted. Yeah. I, and this is in my mid twenties, yeah. right? I'm, I'm, I'm just a few more years ahead of where you're at right now, yeah. and you're on this path, right? And you think you, you've got it all planned out, and then, Bang. boom, mm-hmm. y- you get gut punched. Yeah. And and I had to go out into the newsroom parking lot to cry in my car because I couldn't believe. And I asked myself, you know, all the questions, is, is this the path for me? Yeah. Um, and asking myself, what is next? This is what I thought was going to be next. What is next? Mm-hmm. And I didn't know the answer to that question. And I don't necessarily know the answer to that question here and now today, this yeah. version of myself. But I trusted and always trust that reject in the case of you know early 20s being rejected that was a redirection Mm -hmm. and it took a lot longer to get to my dream job but it ended up being the host of a morning show on the competing number one station (laughs) let's go like (laughs) let's go right let's go but it took watch me win watch me win let's go right but it it took Mm. rejection and like a reset and a growth and did it take longer to reach the goal yeah but would i trade what i learned in those years for for to to have expedited the dream no Mm. i i I learned so much more and was better when the better opportunity came around than if it had come around any earlier Mm -hmm. we can say all this in hindsight right of course but at the time it's the worst moment of your life at the time, yeah. I, I I thought it was over. Yeah, yeah. I thought I got to move back to Ontario and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to live in my parents' basement forever. <laughs> Start a podcast in my mom's <laughs> condo. No, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> podcast didn't exist. I'm coming podcast. for you. I'm coming for you. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that, that's my, that's what's going to keep me up at night now. It's going to be that. Just no, call it that. that moment, bro, every time, I, that's my alarm clock. Yeah. Uh, I am so, uh, like, hello. I am now in the, like, liminal space of nowhere, no one right now, okay? So, no, you guys are doing incredible work. I just giving it to you on the chin there. Can I, 